uh, we cannot hear you. Unmute. Uh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I didn't want to disturb you before. Um, um, well, uh, how to start a lecture? Uh, maybe with the fact that I'm a business lawyer and um, therefore I tend to be pragmatic. Uh, and the second point is uh, I'm a triathlete uh, and I used to compete for 10 hours or more in, in endurance sport. And I'm, be I'm, I'm being pushed by 10 minutes, which are given to me to give a lecture. So let's start at sprint. Um, the, my lecture is uh, devoted to uh, legal aspects of robotization or to robots. And um, I, want to, I want to introduce the goal. It's an invitation for a quick look into another's bubble, into the, bubbles, uh, into the bubble of, if you are, if you are a non-lawyer, um, to have an idea what and how lawyers deal with robo robots or robotics. And for lawyers, um, I'm glad that I, uh, I, was, um, uh, I was hearing to the, to the previous lecture that I have one, at least one lawyer in the audience uh, to have an idea that uh, what and how robotics lawyers, so a special area, a special field of lawyers, deal with um, uh, robots and law. And uh, I hope that the result will be to have sort of an idea how to expand your fields uh, technological, humanistic, medicine, and so on, um, of expertise, um, and um, to understand what to expect from us, from lawyers, what to expect, uh, what, what, what questions to address, uh, how we think, uh, what, what, what's our primary goal of expertise, and so on. So I'll try to, um, uh, to be as, um, uh, as, as informative as possible. Well, it is uh, obvious that robots are fact, that, but th this makes uh, legal times quite exciting. Um, there are some facts which we cannot uh, escape from. Uh, first, the first one, the human has all, a human being has already, already been killed by a robot. Uh, so we need a law to determine who's responsible for what, what ro robots do. Uh, second, robots itself, Robert, Robert, the, the technical thing, uh, can act and enter into contracts. So uh, it expresses the will. It, it expresses the will what is uh, usually, um, usually not, not normally or classically um, uh, in the area of a human being. And there is a quote. Uh, I'm inclined to think that there should be a regulation. Uh, it was said by Elon Musk. Uh, Elon Musk, the man who used the li liberal approach to economy as much as possible. Uh, and there are concerns. Um, I can quote Stephen Hawking. I can quote, uh, I can quote, uh, I think it was um, Bill Gates uh, who said intelligent robots could be a threat to humans. When it all started, it, all, it started in 1942 uh, when, well, I think that all the, from the technological area or technical area are um, acquainted with this uh, free law, laws of robots written by Isaac Asimov uh, and published in I, Robert in 1950. Um, let's only concentrate on big fonts. A robot may not injure a human being. He's not allowed a human being to come to harm. He must... Uh, it or he, I don't know. I still do, 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 not, uh, do not know how to address a robot, he or it, um, must obey the orders uh, given by the human beings. A robot must protect its own existence. Um, and there are some sub roles, some uh, which deal with, uh, with the first rule. Uh, so what do the robot law deals with? It deals with robots, robotics, it deals with algorithms, it deals with artificial intelligence, uh, it deals with drone surveillance robots. It deals with autonomous vehicles and intelligence cars. Uh, it deals with virtual reality and augmented real reality. So there's, this is only a part of what Robert Law deals with, but it is quite a good impression uh, what we are talking about. Um, what are the legal issues? 
the law issues Robert puts in front of us. Uh, it, first of all, not, well, not first of all, but the, the first of all will be the legal personality of a Robert, but uh, the main issues are liability. Uh, what, what are the damages which are caused by a defective robot? Who's, uh, who's uh, liable for it? Uh, how to protect innovation? How to pr protect intellectual property? How to intellect the intellectual property which is created by a robot itself, not by a human who already created a robot? Uh, then, are, then there are a long list, a very long list of contract law questions. Um, starting with research development contracts, licensing contracts, uh, then um, contracts which deal with more complex issues we will tackle uh, at the very end. Criminal law issues. I've already told a robot killed a human. Who's responsible? The human who created it, the software which was put into the robot, uh, how, what's the delimitation between hardware and software? Uh, maybe uh, whether the robot used uh, the wrong algorithm, which was said by an ethical approach, a wrongfully positioned ethical approach before when the software was created. Uh, then there are certain competition law issues. Um, then the main status is a legal statute of a robot. Is, does a robot have a legal personality itself? Is it like a human being? Is it, is it like an enterprise? We'll come to, uh, to, to that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Um, uh, what are, do robots have rights? Do the machines have the rights? Um, I only um, want to point out the fourth bullet um, and just for thinking, just for um, opening your minds or our minds. There is a Article One in German Constitution, which deal with Article One, the first sen sentence in the fir in, in German Constitution, which which says human dignity shall be inviolable. Does a robot have a right to dignity? Well, it's a more philosophical question, but relates to law. I'm happy to hear to have heard philosophical approaches in the first lecture. Um, uh, then there is a quite an area of robots, of legal regulation of robots in specific uh, sectors, uh, technical demands, uh, sanitary demands, uh, demands in health sector, education centers, financial services, um, robots uh, operating on their algorithms on the stock exchanges and so on, uh, manufacturing and smart factorings. Uh, smart smart factories. This is only a very short list, very, very short list of what a robot can tackle when it collides with you. Um, so, um, yeah, once again, we, we are living exciting little times. Um, however, uh, we have to admit, we lawyers do, do have to admit uh, the progress in technology is faster than the progress in law. The law cannot catch the progress in technology. Uh, and uh, it is, this is what I, what I read. This is not a, a, um, um, the, the sentence of me, but Robert of law of today is equivalent of word, the company law, the law of companies, enterprises, one was when it emerged in 19th century. So when the first, um, uh, first um, companies were created uh, in, let's say uh, uh, 18, uh, 1815 or 1890 and so on. This is the status of law against technology today concerning robots. Yes, we need a, uh, I'm looking by example, um, uh, I heard, the, uh, I, I, was, uh, um, uh, I was listening to the, to the debate before multi inter transdisciplinary approach and I already changed uh, the, uh, the title. Uh, so uh, put put yourself the the right the right uh, prefix. Is it multi or is it inter or is it trans uh, disciplinary approach? Uh, but there are some fields uh, of science or practice uh, which uh, tackle the picture on the right. The picture on the right is the classical moral dilemma. 
It's a autonomous vehicle, the car, uh, which drives without any assistance of the driver. Uh, so uh, his, the, the, the driving of the car and the decision the car accepts um, and the consequences are the result of algorithm. And algorithm is a result of previous ethical, uh, let's say, uh, thinking uh, about the values, which value would prevail in the situation, um, which person to spare on the cross. Uh, whether this is a baby with a full life ahead or is it, it is an old lady. Um, whether it, it is uh, a, um, a substance of that algorithm, the costs and benefits of such an accident and such, of, uh, such a decision. Um, and so on. Imagine how far you can go, but it's, it, it's a lot of ethics in the mathematical algorithm, in computing science, and then afterwards in legal consequence, so in legal rule. So we have to think multi or whatever disciplinary um, in uh, tackling robot law. Um, we are not uh, in possession of a, mm, let's say, um, complete leg legislation uh, or complete regulation, but law is in possession with some quite good tools. However, men must think um, quite abstract. Men must generalize, which is not very good for the ordinary people, which are not lawyers, which are not used to such an approach in um, uh, abstracting, uh, abstracting the problem into, uh, into, um, uh, into an individual solution. Um, the, the first line is the first law of Asimov. The second, the second, uh, well, the article is the article from Code Civile in France from 1804, which says, any act of a man which causes damage to another obliged one by whose fault is occurred to repair it. Uh, and we see quite a clear coincidence between the, the first Robert Law of Asimo and already existing uh, law, uh, well, uh, uh, provision of one of the main uh, civil codes in Europe, which is quite similar uh, if we compare it in comparative law in Europe or elsewhere. Um, um, so well, when tackling the problem of liability of a robot or, or uh, liability of a human, uh, we um, uh, definitely uh, have to, uh, um, uh, we, we definitely must um, make the equation or don't make the equation between the robot and a man. Is it, is it ro robot comparable with a man? Uh, so the basic question would be um, the, what it looks quite strange for technicians or for, for non-lawyers. Does a robot has a legal personality? Um, I would say, yeah, probably yes, but we have to understand it. Um, we have natural people, persons, so humans like me, like you and so on. And they, they are created by nature. They, they get their rights by birth and so on. Then we have legal persons, enterprises, companies, and so on. They are legally created, so created by mind. Uh, and they get their birth by registration. And then they live apart from humans. And um, if, we, uh, if we try to understand robots, we'll, we, we understand the robots easier if we compare them with companies than with people, because legally is quite, quite uh, more similar than uh, with technically than with nature. And by registration is quite more, quite easier to understand with full operation than by birth. So, well, this is a, a help, a, a tool, how to understand uh, the thing uh, which is uh, uh, which is um, uh, a robot. Maybe Peter. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I'll, I'll finish. We in... leave some time for the discussion. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, my goal would be was to to tackle the autonomous vehicles and to be very pragmatic, 
uh, we, did, we did that um, in a group which was formed by uh, people from informatics, law, economy, ethics, and insurance. Uh, and um, I will share you. Uh, if you want to, uh, I will send it to Unica. There are some slides, several so slides, which deal with this, uh, uh, with these areas. Um, but um, if I have half a minute, um, are there three laws of rob robotics applicable or not? Looking, observed from the eyes of a today's lawyer, yes, they are still applicable. Can they be used as a background thinking because of their general and abstract approach? Yes, triple S, yes. Do they need, uh, is there any need for legal regulation? Yes, there is obvious, uh, no other way. However, there is not a lot of success in this area. So we are far behind the te technological approach. Um, okay, we have tackled some topics only. And yes, yeah. and Robert will do it yeah. fast and more efficiently. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. It was really interesting uh, presentation. I don't see any question from the audience so far, but I believe that we could start the discussion between four of us. You know, there is one philosopher, one engineer and two lawyers. And uh, I would ask, sorry, <laughs> for first comments about the term of uh, on uh, like uh, uh, robot rights. What do you think about that? I, well, have, I, I have very strong opinion. What you know, robot is uh, and artificial intelligence is more crucial than just a stupid machine that can be called robot. Exactly. On the first program. of all, uh, Igor, we don't have any chance in the face of two lawyers. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, but about robots and artificial intelligence and the, the laws that were invoked at the end, the first one is not to injure any human being. In this case, uh, a logical con a consequence would be that the dilemma, the moral dilemma that the machine will kill either the baby or the old lady is not a moral dilemma anymore because it's under the first law. It doesn't have to kill anybody. It should be, uh, uh, it should stop the car and that's it. And in, in terms of decisions, well, that's the problem. Uh, I mean, because for them, decisions are not like for uh, us decisions. And that's the problems with artificial intelligence and uh, uh, robots. Uh, I mean, imagine uh, a robot being a doctor. Even more, imagine a, a robot being a judge. And a judge, I wouldn't say who, which it's going to decide about your life, whether or not you will, I don't know, lose your house or your children or whatever. Are you confident with that? It may sound like a rhetorical question, but uh, I ask our uh, legal colleagues, uh, would you uh, leave the robots to decide about this legal aspect of our lives? I believe that's uh, more related to artif artificial intelligence uh, within those robots, but yeah, please, uh, Thomas. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, basically, no, uh, what uh, Peter was talking about, legal personality of robots, uh, the legal status of artificial intelligence and basic principles were among uh, the majority of events within our tech hub. Basically, we're trying to, to, to encourage PhD students and students to talk about it. And we have very ni nice, lively discussion about uh, legal personality. And the question, uh, just, just for your curiosity, the question who should uh, be hit by the autonomous car, the older person or the child, is differently answered in different cultures. Right. So in Asian, uh, in Asian countries, you will find a priority for the older person, while in the, let's say, European countries, the majority of the respondents were in favor of uh, saving uh, the, the child. But this is, those dilemmas, of course, are uh, very important. Uh, 
alongside with the dilemma on legal personality, Peter, it was very nice uh, presented. This, uh, this uh, elegant approach, how we can use all their instruments. And uh, I remember myself being in one conference on internet law 20 years ago. And it was a very nice saying, uh, uh, reciting uh, Formula One uh, pilot, uh, Nigel Mantel. He was saying, if you are sitting in the Formula One car and you think that you control everything, it means you are not fast enough. The same with the legal regulation of, of, of the events, what we're talking about. The law is always behind, but there are, we, there are abstract principles, there are abstract norms, as, as Peter perfectly told. And just the last remark, uh, what uh, I was uh, also reading for, for some extent, there are some propositions how to deal with, uh, let's say, let's say algorithms, how to deal with some hidden parts of what we don't understand. The first one is the transparency. I mean, the codes should be transparent. It should be verified. Uh, second proposition is certification. Maybe it should be certified by certain bureau in order they, to be not uh, harmful, uh, not discriminatory, etc. So we're still looking for a solution. Uh, thank you very much. Maybe if we go now, uh, it's, uh, I, I believe uh, we could uh, continue with this discussion for at least uh, half an hour, one hour, something. I have many questions, by the way, but let's keep our main subject. That's, uh, you know, education and uh, my question, but uh, Sorin, I, I guess you can check also. There is one question for you um, on chat. Um, the question is, for instance, if you talk about students in the field of technology. Uh, these uh, so-called soft skills or maybe a certain knowledge from the field of social sciences, should we this consider as, as I said, as a kind of uh, extra curriculum uh, education or should be part of regular cur curriculum that we are developing within our uh, universities? Because probably is related to the definition uh, that was given by uh, Urban Kordash in the first session, uh, either we are talking about multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary. For transdisciplinary, I believe we should uh, develop new curricula. But for uh, interdisciplinary or um, uh, multidisciplinary, I believe, you know, we are in the field where we do not know exactly how to deal, how to provide this knowledge also to uh, you know, students, for instance, in technology or vice versa. Uh, please, sorry. Yes, thank you, thank you, Igor. I am, uh, very quickly, and I thank also to, to Sibal for the question. Uh, yes, I think uh, we should integrate it and uh, integrate it in the core of our curriculum, this kind of studies. I mean, I, I, I've talked about the necessity of integrating uh, medical humanities into medical education. I had, uh, I think three weeks ago, a very good discussion with um, a rector of a polytechnic institute who said that they are going to, to put as mandatory courses, uh, critical thinking and apply ethics. Exactly based on what my previous colleagues uh, have mentioned. I mean, there are very important uh, discussions in engineering, uh, in all sciences and technologies uh, about uh, these um, soft skills, as you said, but also uh, it's very important to train our mind to, to think in a certain way. And this can be done only by a critical uh, approach. Well, if it comes from philosophy and or from sociology or from history, it doesn't matter. But it's important to have this infusion and not to have an either or in terms of domains. As I said, the domains are only for deans and librarians. In, in terms of knowledge, we, don't, we have problems. And problems are at the intersections of many so defined domains. I mean, cognitive sciences, inter, artificial intelligence. They don't belong to, to a certain pre-established domain, right? So we have to, to collaborate and to push the, the, the limits of our predefined uh, domain. So my short answer is yes, we need that. I wouldn't say it's a general tendency in Europe, but it should be. 
because with so many social viruses around us, we will discover more and more the necessity of uh, education uh, under these dimensions. Thank you very much, Sorin. And uh, maybe, uh, Peter, from your side, some final comments, but we will have to finish uh, this session. We are getting late. So. Well, I was, so, I was talking too much, so uh, I don't have any final comments. But uh, maybe about teaching Robert Law. Uh, it looks that it uh, emerged like a uh, special field of law with specialized lawyers and so on. But I don't think it is that would be appropriate uh, uh, approach. Well, it, it is one of the approaches, but I, I, I don't know whether it is, um, it is very appropriate. Uh, because um, we deal in Robert Law with so many areas, with criminology, with business law, uh, let's say clouds, uh, autonomic vehicles, uh, competition uh, law questions, then all the contracts and so on, and so on. The newly created contracts, which are created from all the, let, let's say, classical types we already know and uh, create a completely new mixture, uh, a completely new animal in the contracts, uh, in the contracts and area. Uh, then legal philosophy, sociology, uh, the, the umbrella of GDPRs, the overall umbrella of GDPRs uh, in all the areas of law. So uh, I think that if we want to, um, to have um, clever students, who want to raise, educate clever students, we have to uh, deal with all the topics separately within the area or within the field um, which deals with that with, 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 with that principal area. And then the students would be able to, uh, to, to, to create a synthesis of his uh, or her um, uh, findings, studies, and so on. And this is a real study. This is not offering the meal, the tourist menu, but offering a, uh, let's say, ordering a la carte and then creating uh, a, uh, let's say, mm, I don't know how to, how, how to express, but uh, something pleasant. Okay, yeah. Scientific, well. Scientifically, psychologically, and yeah. um, concerning cleverness of the student. Thank you, P uh, Peter. We have to finish this session. Yeah, no, I, I uh, of course, I would like to thank uh, all of you for these really interesting presentations. Uh, and I believe this session was really, uh, I would say multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary, somewhere in between, I believe. Uh, I know Luciano is waiting for us. Uh, I just would like to invite you to the next part, second part of our UNICA seminar in two weeks. Uh, uh, but uh, I believe uh, Luciano will, so, yes, thank you very much, uh, Rector Papic, really excellent session. Thank you very much to you as a chair and also to the excellent speakers. I really enjoyed it. Uh, also, of course, uh, the other session was all, also great. So I'm very happy about this uh, event uh, today. I think uh, it has been really inspiring. And uh, thank you very much again to the organizers, uh, to your team, uh, uh, to Barbara Novak and her team, uh, to the UNICA office working very hard for uh, you know this organization, to all participants uh, to be uh, online uh, you know with us uh, today, and indeed uh, uh, we would like to invite all of you to participate in the second part of this uh, webinar on interdisciplinary and intersectoral research next time uh, in modern universities, uh, which will take place on the 24th of February at the same time, 10 a.m. Uh, Central European time. So looking forward to uh, seeing you. And uh, again, please uh, you know, visit uh, the UNICA website because there are many other opportunities also for uh, you know, other disciplines and other aspects of uh, uh, UNICA activities. Thank you again. Have a good day. Uh, and uh, Luciano, allow me a special thanks to you and of course to Unica for helping us organizing this event. So see Thanks you in again. two weeks. See you soon. Thanks. Thanks.